tech community, to his vinyl community. What's going on, y'all? LJ, and it's time for another cassette update. When you're hot, you're hot. And I thought June was metal month. Looks like that's filling over into July, and it's going to be the summer of molten metal, at least as far as cassettes go. There's just another awesome batch here, stuff that turned up and I couldn't say no to. So let's just jump right into them. Uh, as always, huge thanks to all the new subscribers. I mean, welcome aboard. Super, super cool. Really hope you dig what you're seeing. And, and like, I know it's been, you know, four, five, six cassette posts and, and all this metal that's showing up. It, it's rare. It, it almost never happens. And, and I love all the comments on these. So I wanted to thank everyone for those. It's on. Uh, Cassettes in general is a huge nostalgic trip, right? I went to high school in the late 80s, early 90s, so cassette was the format of choice. And I make a lot of references to I had this in my jacket, I had this in my jacket. I still have one of the jackets, I'll have to bring it out in the next video. And it had inner pockets and one on the sleeve as well, it was called a flight jacket. Uh, or a service jacket, whatever. And on the inside pockets, I have my Walkman and a cassette, and then two over here. And in the arm pocket, I have another tape there, or a pack of cigarettes, one of the two. We all had vices. Um, and a lot of these, yeah, I just haven't seen them on cassette since then. So to find them again, it's, it's exhilarating, it's exciting. And um, that was just the affinity for cassettes was born way back then. They don't sound as good as vinyl most of the time. It's not always about that, though. It's the way they, they sound when you shake them. On, onwards and upwards. King's X, Faith, Hope, Love. It's Love, uh, what a huge single this was. This is, uh, I think, the one King's X I didn't have. I know I have four or five others, but super cool find. There's that one. I'm pulling the sleeves on some of these. This one, man. Woo hoo hoo! Venom, welcome to hell. This is early 80s, 1981, black metal. Uh, there's really no insert here, it's just a J card. Not a clear cassette, though. This tape would scare you. This would scare you. So I was very, very excited to find that. It just rarely pops up in any format. To find it on cassette was awesome. There's Venom, Welcome to Hell. Here's a, a copy of Metallica's Jump in the Fire. This showed up. What's funny about this, I have two others. So that's copy number three of Jump in the Fire. Funny, they're all different. Here's the one that just turned up. You see the black inlay behind the clear cassette. Here's a copy I already had. No black inlay behind the cassette. And here's the third copy I had, and this has a paper label on it. So I'm not sure how many copies of Jump in the Fire there are out there, and it just has uh, Jump in the Fire, Seek and Destroy Live, and Phantom Lord Live. So there's three copies, every one of them uniquely different, and you know that's really the only thing that would get me to buy multiple copies of something, is they've gotta be distinguishably different. Onwards, Halloween, Judas. This is great. I know I recently showed a, a uh, Halloween cassette that had this and another album, the J Judas EP. I do have this on vinyl. This is an excellent album. There's Judas. Great stuff. Here's a Bride, Live to Die on Pure Metal. This is actually Christian metal um, from, oh man, way back in 85, 86. This is excellent, and by Christian metal, I don't mean, it's not striperish at all. Get your glasses out. Can you read that? Because I can't. Uh, it's like Christian thrash almost, but it's still 80s metal, 80s metallic. Definitely one worth checking out. Again, it's called Bride, Live to Die. That was fantastic. Here's Push Comes to Shove by Jackal, mid 90s. I thought Jackal was great. There's an awesome illustration in this. I hadn't heard this Jackal album. I have uh, heard the first one. I have it on cassette as well. But I check out the artwork on this. That's the coolest thing in the world. Jackal is just, I've always thought them to be Southern metal, Southern, Southern rock, but heavier with metal. Just excellent stuff. There's uh, Jackal. I hadn't seen this in ages. This is called Blitzbeer. It's uh, Blitzbeer Live. Blitzbeer is just, you know, 1990, the end of the hair metal era and grunge starting to take over, and for what it's worth, and it's a topic for another discussion, I don't know if grunge really came out and killed metal. I think metal walked itself out the door, to be honest with you. It got pretty silly at that point, and it, it needed to regroup, and in regroup it did, and came back in fine form, but it, it was time. Here's Crimson Glory. This is uh, Strange and Beautiful, sorry. This is one that, again, I had to use my phone a friend. Greeno, do I get this? And he's like, hell yeah, dude. It's awesome awesome cassette 
And he was right. I listened to it. I want to fight saying uh, I spun it, which is Natural Instinct with vinyl. So that was excellent. Great, great, great tape to add to the collection. It just, you know, it sounds like, it sounds like the times. It's 1991, so you kind of got like a heavier than a Saigon kick, but uh, heavier than a King's X, but still kind of along those lines. Just solid stuff. Whatever, here's uh, Except Staying Alive. This is a later live Except cassette. I'm really happy to just keep turning up Except. This is 1990. It's got a nice write-up from uh, 1982, which for me was the best year in metal ever, period. 1982. And, and I know there's a few others out there that share that opinion, but it just has a great set list. You have um, Metal Heart, Breaker, uh, London Leather Boys, Restless and Wild, on and on. Epic show from uh, 82. I showed Carnivore's Retaliation in the last update. Here's Carnivore's debut. This I wasn't as familiar with as I was with Retaliation. What a great picture in the insert. That's great stuff. Stuff. Pretty standard Road Racer, Road Runner release from the time. Just 80s thrash metal is where they started. It got a little more melodic with the second Retaliation, which is why I like it a bit more. Uh, I mentioned there was one other video I was missing after I showed Strange Highways in the last video, and it was Last in Line. We've all seen that before. Last in Line, every bit as sweet as um, uh, Holy Diver. I'll always go blank on camera. Wasp. This is uh, the second copy I have of this. Again, the other one I have, just a bit different. This is on Capital. The other one was uh, a first release on, uh, on an independent label. Here is the inlay. This is just a classic. Everything about Wasp's first album. Everything about Wasp's first four albums is classic. And then those that came after it still slam. Better start hauling. Maiden, Best of the Beast. That's just a great cover. That is a great cover. Great cover. This is a collection of... How many tracks are here? Nine, seven, 16. <laughs> Didn't think I was gonna do it, did you? Uh, here's the insert. Just full out killer compilation. That's just lyrics, there's no fun there. Check out this. Excellent, excellent, excellent made in compilation. And you know what, it's it's kind of a nice breezeway. It's got some of the uh, X Factor in uh, virtual XI or 11 material in there. Which, taken in context of an overall compilation I can tolerate, taken as its own merit, I, I really struggle with. It's uh, over, Motorhead, Overnight Sensation. Haven't had a chance to listen to it. I have never heard this Motorhead album from 96. If it's something you're a fan of, have a recommendation of where to start. So your post uh, 1916 and uh, what else had come out of that point? I know they had a couple of people would consider missteps, but you know, for me, <clears throat> March or Die. Motorhead's Motorhead, man. You know, it's like ATDC. You know what you get. It is what it is. This uh, really excited me. This is Motorhead live at Brixton. I have uh, No Sleep at All on vinyl, which is absolutely excellent, and the world is yours. The uh, double volume release just came out recently, and I think Motorhead just puts out excellent live albums. Really good set list on this one. This was uh, a great release. My only complaint is uh, just because you got the power isn't on this. This is from 94, but that's fine because it's on um, No Sleep at All. Anyways, it's another Sepultura. This is Blood Rooted. I had never seen this album. I listened to it quick and it's all uh, outtakes and demos, but well done and well recorded and some uh, live stuff too from, uh, and covers from, I'm sorry, here's the tape, uh, from uh, Chaos AD and Roots, uh, that period. Some very, very cool and interesting stuff. There's uh, Mike Patton from Faith No More and Mr. Bungle appears on this, which really I was like, you know there was vocal acrobatics anywhere once you know Mike. What else was on here? Um, Beneath the Remains Live, Biotech is Godzilla, Symptom of the Universe, uh, Sabbath cover. Really, really interesting. Definitely fan-driven, fan-only kind of thing, but super. Is uh, Pantera, Great Southern Trend Kill. They did not have this one on cassette. Definitely a harder Pantera than I think uh, what folks have been used to at the time. And it was after this that I, I lost Pantera. <clears throat> this wasn't my favorite. It was worth picking up when I found it on cassette. Uh, Cowboys from Hell, 
one of the best albums I've ever heard. Vulgar Display of Power, great follow-up, far beyond driven. I started to slip away from Pantera. This was kind of, eh, it was all right. But I was still such a huge fan of the first two that accepting anything new, for some reason, it was hard. Uh, here's two from Overkill. Later ones, here's WFO and Necroshine. These are both from the mid-90s, 94 and 99. So later overkill. For the sake of time, I won't pull them out and show the J cards, just the covers. They actually, I, they were pretty good, you know, like ACDC or Motorhead. With overkill, you know what you're getting. Here's uh, Sabotage, Dead Winter Dead. I haven't listened to this yet. Really excited to. Clear cassette. Really, really getting back into Sabotage a lot lately and, and digging a lot of the new releases. Newer releases from uh, the mid-90s, early 2000s, that period that I wasn't familiar with. Much like Dead Winter Dead. It's just great stuff. Um, I showed in a previous video I had turned up four Cannibal Corpse cassettes. Which is good, because I turned up three more. Here's Tomb of the Mutilated. There's nothing to be said that hasn't already been said about their cover art. Actually, this was one of those, and this is the worst. Uh, here's Gallery of Suicide. I actually remember trying to get into death metal and having Tomb of the Mutilated out on my desk in art class, and it got taken away because of the absolutely horrendous cover art. Uh, I mean, of course, at 16, that was the coolest thing in the world. You don't like it, and I like it because you don't like it. It's just rebellion. Now, I, uh, I get it. <clears throat> I get it. And these were probably the five I was most excited about. Here's King Diamond in Concert, 1987, Abigail. I think most are familiar with this. It is what it is. It is what it says it is. It's King Diamond in Concert in 1987. Uh, only missing a few King Diamond tapes at this point, and here was another one of them. Fatal Portrait. I mean, really. Really. <laughs> wow. What an epic, epic, epic album. Fatal Portrait is fantastic. There's three more here. They're all from Merciful Fate. Here's Time. Excellent album. I have not listened to this yet. This is the beginning. So if you're familiar with it, drop me a comment. And here is a, a collection of rare and unreleased material. This is Return of the Vampire. This was stellar. And what made it that way was listening to it and going through the liner notes that were written by King Diamond himself about uh, how each date was different, where it was recorded. That kind of thing. You know the drill? So that's a handful. That's another 25 or so to add to the collection. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll keep the videos coming. And uh, everyone that checked out the contest response to uh, Damien and to, to Vance, thanks so much for checking those out. Thanks for the kind words about both those guys because they're just awesome. It was a pleasure to uh, have the chance to speak about this. So thanks guys for giving me that chance. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, sure we'll have another update soon. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Ciao.